Hello and welcome to Soul Priorities. My name is Tuwaka Kelly and answering a response, Let There Be Light, I have with me today a wonderful man who answered that call by co-founding a company called Waka Waka, which in Swahili means uh, to, shine, to shine bright. Uh, here with us today we have um, please correct me <laughs> if I say this yeah, not exactly this. properly, but uh, Maurits Hrun? Maurits Hrun, yeah, that's All right. right. All right, but so <laughs> welcome. Uh, thank you so much for uh, being with me and us tonight to share your, your in incredible vision and, and company and service to humanity. Well, thank you for inviting me. Yes. I... Um, it happened, just being in the flow of life and discovering things along the way, that I was um, uh, taking tea and visiting with a friend, and he, he pulled out the, the box and this yellow device and introduced me to, to Waka Waka and told me what your company was about, and I said, oh, I have to meet this man. This is, this is pretty incredible and um, went onto your website to see what you're doing and I would like to introduce your work to a population that may have not uh, discovered it yet so if you can um, kind of share the impetus of, of the Waka Waka, say what, say what it is exactly, we haven't revealed that yet. Um, okay, I gladly do that. Great. Um, Waka Waka, as you mentioned rightfully, in Swahili means shine bright. And we gave that name to uh, the most efficient solar red lamp uh, available on the planet, which is quite extraordinary. It's not my achievement, my personal achievement, but with my co-founder, Camille van Gestel, we've been developing, we've been developing this uh, solar red lamp, especially for people in third world countries, the one and a half billion people in the world, 20% 20, 20 of the global population, which is not connected to the electrical grid and who for um, having light after, uh, after sunset have to resort to kerosene lights, to uh, candles, uh, very bad light, but also very dangerous. Um, toxic, uh, toxic air comes from that. I mean, uh, kerosene uh, sounds very exciting because it's used in, in, in aircraft, but the, the, the very poor quality of kerosene that these people have to use is actually um, well, very dangerous to their health, uh, both, for, both for, their, um, for their lungs, but also for sheer accidents. Um, no, no less than 300,000 people, mainly children, because they tend to be uh, less uh, careful with fire. More than 300,000 people every year die from accidents, fires with kerosene lights. And even over 6 million people every year get seriously uh, injured, maimed for life actually. Not small burns, but really, uh, really maimed for life from accidents with kerosene fires. So we thought there is um, sunlight available abundantly, um, especially in the, the areas, the off-grid areas, where people have to use these uh, kerosene, mm -hmm. uh, often, often very costly to them too. It's producing very, very poor light um, in comparison to, uh, to, to the LED light, which is becoming more and more available, and more and more um, affordable as well. So we, we decided to develop our own um, social LED lamp and make it uh, look attractive so that even people in the West would, would like to buy it. Actually, uh, to our astonishment, half of our sales are in the West, in the United States and in, in Europe, so people do obviously like it. And uh, the quality, which is good enough for the uh, United States and, and the Netherlands and, and the rest of Europe, for example, is also good for Africa and Asia. Yeah, it's um, one of the things that you uh, caught my attention there is it being affordable and the population that you're talking about, okay, you know, Westerners and Western culture in the Netherlands and the US, um, 
you know, the, the, the price point is more accessible. But when you're talking about populations um, that, are, that are in extreme poverty, how do you make it so that they can afford it? How are they actually receiving um, the, the unit to, to benefit their own lives? Well, the fact that we've been uh, quite successful in selling it in Western countries um, at a price which is uh, two to three times as high as we sell it for in Africa and Asia makes us a kind of uh, Robin Hood company, so to say. Um, um, laughingly or smilingly, we, we, we say to uh, customers in the West, uh, we know you, you pay uh, way too much because um, the amount that you pay more, we can use to subsidize the price in developing countries. Yes, and that's one of the things that really caught my attention, the sustainability, mm -hmm. how it supports the environment, but also the program that you have set up with the relative uh, uh, nonprofit foundation, that mm -hmm. everyone who purchases a Waka Waka light source or power source one is sent to uh, an individual in an acne population. Yeah, when, when people buy it directly through our website, we can guarantee that. Uh, yeah. We sell through uh, retailers, etc. They also want to have a share um, of the pie, of course, and then the amount of money that we that we get in uh, is, is diminished and depends on, on the kind of retail, etc. But uh, every time. Uh, from everything that we uh, that we, this left uh, from uh, after we uh, paid our own bills, uh, sure. we um, certainly give money to our own Waka Waka Foundation, which then helps the people at the, the real bottom of the pyramid. We, we we try to supply the base of the pyramid, but we also have the bottom of the pyramid that's really not able to even afford. Um, uh, the product at cost price, so we help them to subsidize it from what we uh, what we take in and and which is left uh, after we pay the own bills. Okay, so if people buy it directly from your website, then that's that increases the um, the amount of people that uh, through the foundation in other countries and at risk, um, in that's increases right. their. Uh, their um, their access or their the availability to to the devices. That's right. Now one of them is okay. Just to under, understand that, so it's it's a greater benefit if people just log on to wakawaka.com and then they they buy it directly from there, as opposed yeah. to some some shop. Okay. <laughs> That's right. Um, yeah. Well, you know that's that's also good to know not to not to take away from a shop and what they're introducing to it, but you know in terms of supporting other populations, where where does the efficiency lie? Where you know how to how to target that that market? It's good to know, and then people can can make a choice about that yep. how they're willing to invest. Yep. So one of them is specifically just a light source mm -hmm. that that folks can use in lieu of kerosene, as you said, or in Western societies, you know, out camping or, you know, firelight, whatnot. Another one I can use to to charge up my, my iPhone or an iPad or, or your can camera use that way as well. Or okay. even your iPad for a, for a couple of hours when it's completely full, yeah. So that's pretty beneficial if I'm out camping and have to write a novel at the same time <laughs> in some way. But also after, for example, I, I left a couple of uh, Waka Waka's in New York when I visited uh, the Clinton Global Initiative last year. I'm going there uh, in a couple of days again. Um, we left some at the office of, uh, of uh, President Clinton um, as, a, as a courtesy gift. But after Sandy, uh, they were the only office uh, not out of light completely, you know. So we had a, we have a picture of three Waka Waka standing in, in his um, shop in his window, charging from the sun in New York and uh, or collecting the sun to produce uh, power to uh, to use as light uh, after sunset. That's great. One of the things that um, meditating before the show, just you know, just what questions, uh, seeing what questions arrive for me. 
One was the, the awareness of the reality that some populations, even though they may be at need, even though they may be asking for help in some, in some form, in some energy flow, in some uh, community support, even though that exists, there's also often the case of a resistance to the help that they're looking for. Mm -hmm. Particularly, you know, if it's coming from if it's coming from you know outside, um, sometimes there's the attitude of like, you know, who do you think you are that you can help me, or we don't need your help, or it, this kind of resistance because of what may be touched, you know, either it's you know shame or guilt or feeling that they can do it do it on their own because mm -hmm. they haven't kind of really surrendered to the concept of community or global community. Mm -hmm. yeah. Where and and some people kind of go in with the attitude, well, you know, I can help, and it's well intended, but not necessarily well received because of that kind of internal dynamic. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the questions that 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 arose for me is how how was Waka Waka received? How were these relationships created that you show up with with a light and say, hey, we we think this is you know better and safer and more cost effective and and uh, a benefit to your your village your community your population was there a resistance was it immediately accepted what was that process for you well actually um, we've been surprised with uh, the positive acceptance of, of the product even if, if it was coming from the Netherlands um, people from over 90 countries within one year have been able to find us in Harlem, at the Wilhelmina Straat 18 in Harlem, in the Netherlands, wow. even from Ethiopia, from Eritrea, from Nepal, from Mali, from Sierra Leone, from Liberia, from Nigeria, I can mention all those countries. Um, we, did, we did some research with uh, UNHCR, the United Nations Refugee Organization, in order to see how it was recepted how people uh, dealt with it, if they liked it or not. And the only problem is that um, people fought over it because they also wanted to have one. We had a, we had a sample of, uh, I think, 500, uh, 500 lambs that we distributed through UNHCR. Uh, but there, of course, were many, many more families uh, in, in that refugee camp. And they saw that some people got them and they, got, they didn't. And they saw the benefit of them. And, uh, well, there was some quarrel. Why do they get it, and why don't don't we? See, so yeah. um, we we didn't really have uh, we haven't come across a problem that uh, that you just mentioned. Yeah, I, I didn't imagine so, but that that can come up. You know that that can, where, where you know where where is the, where is the where is the where is the quarrel, and and sometimes when a solution is presented. Mm -hmm. That gives a um, that gives a way of grace, you know, a state of grace. The you know something in the personality can come up to resist that because they're familiar with some kind of quarrel or tension or or conflict either within themselves or or in their community. Well, so th th this becomes something else. Well, where's mine? <laughs> well, what what we try to do to to overcome that or to prevent that uh, from even um, yeah. surfacing is that we. We tend to work with um, as much as we can with organizations that people are familiar with and that they trust. And we, we don't necessarily, even preferably not, uh, go there ourselves. Uh, we have um, developed and, and produced this, this um, device and we want to make it available to whoever uh, sees it fit to use it. Um, and so we've been approached um, by a, a number, a large number of organizations, foundations, either in the Netherlands where, where I live, but also from the United States and elsewhere, uh, that people approach us and they have their own foundation working within communities in, in Africa and Asia. And they say, uh, can we use your product? And then we, we, well, we try to make it available um, as uh, accessible and as aff affordable as possible. And then they do our job because our our aim is to help people get a good, decent, um, sustainable light. And if any other organization is uh, helping us 
achieving that goal, we, we gladly embrace them and we help them by supplying uh, these lights to them. That, that's quite phenomenal, quite phenomenal. And also a bright, um, a, a light shining on the, a business model in terms of other businesses that are wanting to um, develop relationships in, in such a way. It's, it's, it's quite brilliant. Is this your, your idea or your team collectively come up with this model? It's simple, but it's, it's really efficient. Well, the, the model has been developing, uh, working. Um, I mean, um, we, I had some ideas, Camille Vaisel had some ideas. <clears throat> and um, by putting them into practice, um, we, uh, we encounter people, we, we talk to organizations, we go to places, I've been to, um, to Tanzania, I've been to Haiti, um, to some other places, and walking around and talking to people and seeing how it functions. Uh, you get new ideas and you add them to what you've already thought of yourself. You correct them, or you um, you expand them. So it's it's work in progress. Sure. And sustainability being one of the key components and driving forces with Waka Waka sustainability and education. Mm -hmm. how, how would you say you've kind of arrived at this being um, a sole priority for you? Well. That's a very easy question. Actually, I've been um, I've been busy with these questions uh, on um, development, and fairness in the world, and sustainability practically all my life. I've been studying political science. Um, I started studying when the first uh, report to the Club of Rome was was published. I was rejoicing really when um, Groharlan and Brundtland published her um, Our Common Future book because that was the first time that on a global level, very visibly, uh, the North-South uh, problem, so to say, was uh, was connected to the sustainability problem, that fairness in, in development was connected to the sustainability pro problem. I've always been of the opinion that uh, we in the so-called developed West, we have a far too large footprint and that people in the poor south, um, to, say, to say like that, to put it like that, mm -hmm. uh, have been forced in fact to, uh, to pollute and to, to, to spoil and to, to, to rob their own environment and, and to in fact um, harm their own future because they were, um, they were too poor not to. So I think we cannot de, um, solve uh, the one problem without the other. Yep. Everything is in relationship. You'll, you'll hear me say that, but it's, it's yeah. absolutely true. Everyone and everything is in relationship. And so as soon as... Both here and, and in developing countries, that people uh, develop a right attitude towards their, their natural habitat, their own environment, and also um, in the social in the social field, that we need um, uh, socially justice, so, the social justice uh, in development as well. Yeah, G given that it's a, a solar device, how have you experienced it in your own use of it, or observation of other people using it, that it brings you closer to the nature that you endeavor to sustain? Well, yeah. Um, Using it, you, um, I, I think I admire the force of nature because um, just imagine you have a, it's, a, it's about, about the size of a packet of cigarettes. It's only weighing 200 grams, waka waka. Um, and if you just put it out in the sun for, for a day uh, on the New York um, line, for example, or Madrid, which is the same uh, latitude, um, after eight hours, you have a completely full uh, waka waka. And you can charge your mobile phone, even your iPhone, your smartphone with it, and still have enough light for all of the night. And then the next day you can recharge it because there, every day there's new sun. So you admire the, the power of the sun that it can completely supply you with all the energy you need for, for your mobile phone, your electric devices, and still have light. Great. Are there any surprises that you're at liberty to reveal in terms of um, what else is the company is developing? Well, actually, um, we called Off-Grid Solutions. 
um, and the fact that uh, being off-grid used to be a disadvantage to, to pe people in the so-called underdeveloped South, mm -hmm. uh, is becoming more and more of an advantage because they can, com they can immediately jump into the, the, the 21st century. But they don't have to invest in all those um, grid solutions, um, either banking or mobile phones or energy or water uh, purification or sanitation or whatever. They can immediately use um, all the, the modern techniques available now to, uh, well, to, to discard that and, and to, to put the money directly in, in a high, highly efficient uh, modern technology without any pollution. Granting greater interdependence. Yeah. Yeah, yeah great. How do you feel your, um, we get closer to home with this question, that your, your own soul is informing your, your work and your life purpose? Mm -hmm. Well, I've been tr always trying to, uh, to follow um, my own passion, my own feelings. Uh, and developing this um, this business, I've been trying to be as open as possible. I mean, I'm entering, I'm a um, serial sustainability entrepreneur since 1982, so it's uh, some 30 years already. I've been, always been trying to uh, be open towards um, business partners, um, people that I, I engage with, um, that I work together with, Sometimes you're uh, disappointed, but most of the time uh, is uh, in a, is an advantage. I mean, both in terms that you don't have to spend much negative energy in trying to to prevent things happening that you rather not want to um, to to get to be happening to you, um, and, and both in terms of, of um, the fact that uh, trusting people. And um, approaching them with an open mentality often um, invites people to do the same, and then you get um, you get much better cooperation than, than you uh, probably would have gotten uh, when you when you would have approached them in a different way. Yeah, clear vision, open mind, clear communication, and boundaries, and and perseverance. And yep. it's you know there's there's a lot of experiences in in creating a business. And you've said many things here that I feel a number of people will will also heed. Young entrepreneurs, and particularly those who want to succeed with sustainability, which mm -hmm. has been um, I have a, a a number of people that have experienced incredible challenges wanting to just take care of the earth. Mm -hmm. And also take care of their own livelihood at the same time. So I feel that you're, you know, spearheading something that other people can, you know, use as a model. So there's many things that you're, as, as far as I see, that you and your company are are, are gifting to the world with that. I, I hope not to sound presumptuous, but uh, I hope by um, doing what we do and showing. Uh, the way we do it, we also inspire people to um, to take courage and and to use their own talents to do something similar, uh, maybe in a, a completely different field, but trust their own strength and, and just uh, go about it. And, and, and well, you, you mentioned the word perseverance. You, you're certainly in that. It's a lot of hard work, but it's a hell of a lot of fun too. It's very yeah. rewarding to to. Uh, to realize that um, I, from my very privileged uh, position, um, are able to help people that are, well, for some reason or another, are very much underprivileged. I, I, I feel that's a privilege to me, to be able to do that. And I, I maybe it sounds a little bit holy, I don't mean that at all, but, but I really feel like that. Beautiful. Well, well, I mean it, and I'm glad you spoke those words. I appreciate what you're saying, and and please have the courage to 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 speak your heart. Continue to speak your heart. I will. Thank you for your perseverance and your work. Thank you for, to your entire team at Waka Waka and Waka Waka Foundation. Yep. 
that's a fun word to say. <laughs> yes. Waka waka. Yeah. Waka waka. You're, you're gonna forget it once you have heard it. Yeah. Yes. Now, <laughs> in this time, our, our hope is that everybody on the planet knows what waka waka means. It means hope. It means quality, and it means that sustainability is within reach of everybody. Great. Well, I'll take that with me tonight. And for our guests following along, please visit wakawaka.com. Do I have that correctly, or is there a hyphen in there? It's uh, waka. Then, uh, um, uh, how do you say that? Uh, yes. So yes. Waka hyphen waka. Yeah. Dot com. Yeah. That's right. And wakawakafoundation.org to learn more about your uh, stichting. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'll see you again. Thank you very much for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.